Hi folks, this is Karim Rao from IT uh, Visualizer channel. Sorry, visu uh, sorry, Visualizer, Visualizer, uh, vis Visualizer channel. Today we'll continue our lab, uh, uh, Marvel and DC United. We have been discussing in the previous video uh, the following. This is the tenth video. We have been discussing the vo the following. Uh, here we begin uh, our second part of the lab which is creating the DC Comics domain in the first part of the series which we have been discussing we have been uh, uh, discussing how we can create the Marvel domain we have created two domain controllers we have uh, created group policies we have create, created the users from the Marvel Universe okay and the groups also from the Marvel Universe we have been discussing all of this in the previous or the first part of the series this part will begin uh, creating the DC Comics domain which will contain all of the DC Comics uh, characters villains so and so so the first thing we will do in the Azor we have so the first thing we will do in the Azor that we have created a resource group for the DC Comics domain this is the first thing to do we have created a resource group and we have created this resource group in the Microsoft data center region US central okay the Marvel domain we have created all of the uh, domain controllers the resource groups the virtual networks all of these were created on the Microsoft data set uh, data center region uh, US East so this will be in a different region it is US central so you have first created our resource group because this is the first uh, first thing to create if you are working with the Azure cloud interface you need to create a resource group and under the resource group we will begin creating uh, the different items so this is the basic container or this is the main container that will contain all of the other elements okay so we have created DC Comics resource group okay in the data center US central and then we have created our virtual uh, virtual network for the DC Comics we have uh, uh, created uh, a virtual network space address which will be 10.0.0 slash uh, slash 16 and then from this network space address we have created our first subnet which we will have all of our DC Comics uh, domain controllers and workstations will take its uh, IP addresses from this first subnet range okay and we have added the DNS uh, server IPs okay to the uh, DC Comics virtual network configuration item so if any virtual machine created under uh, the DC Comics virtual network uh, the network address space it will be delivered or the IP uh, the IP of the DNS servers will be delivered to it automatically okay so we have created the DC Comics resource a group and then we have created our DC Comics virtual network uh, network space address and from it we will create our first subnet and we have the DNS server setting to the Azure virtual network resource and then we have created our first uh, domain controller through creating an Azure virtual machine and then after creating the Azure virtual machine and we have Windows Server 2019 on it we will install uh, the Active Directory domain services and then promote the server to be a domain controller okay and then after that we created uh, our DNS reverse lookup zone we have said before that, that the DNS uh, function is to uh, resolve the uh, name of the workstation or the server to an IP address as for the DNS reverse lookup lock, look zone it is the different it is different it resolve the IP address of the workstation to its name okay so it's reverse of the normal DNS or the forward DNS zone the forward DNS zone it is uh, its function is to uh, resolve the name of the PC or server to an IP address as for the reverse lookup zone it uh, resolves the IP of the workstation or server to its name okay full domain name of course okay the DNS resolves uh, 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 even for the DNS uh, forward zone or the reverse lookup zone they work with the full domain name so they give you uh, if you give it the IP address sorry if you give it the IP address of the workstation it will give you the full domain name of the workstation or domain or and if you give it the full domain name of the PC it will give you the IP address okay so and we have find uh, then after that we have uh, found a problem that when we added 
the DNS servers to the network connection properties to the server manually as I said before the DNS servers should be distributed automatically through the Azure virtual network uh, space address it should be delivered to the Azure uh, virtual machines automatically you don't need to put DNS servers in the network uh, properties of the server okay this is done automatically for you okay uh, and when we have done this this have done a little bit of a problem uh, and we have installed also wins uh, on the server okay the domain controller so we have the wins wins is something like the dns but it was older version of win oh, it's something like an older older venture uh, version of uh, dns but it is now obsolete or it's not used anymore but it uh, it is uh, it it does the same function okay but it it gives you the uh, resolves the NetBIOS name of the PC or workstation, not the full domain name, to an IP address. The DNS resolves the full domain name to IP address. The WINS resolves the NetBIOS name. Okay. Anyway, uh, so we have a problem when we added the DNS servers manually to the network connection properties of the domain controller, and also when we added the WINS server IP address manually to the DNS uh, to the uh, network connection of the domain controller network connection properties of the domain controller so this have done a little bit of a problem anyway we will know after that that uh, you should leave it to be uh, in, uh, distributed automatically by the Azure uh, virtual network address space configuration item okay this will be distributed from it okay so you don't need to put it manually okay but I will see in this video I will show you another way of doing it manually without having any problems or we will see how this manual uh, issue uh, it's it's not a big problem but we will see it don't worry and then after that we have made a custom console and we put different uh, different items in it dns active directory users and computers group policy management event viewer computer management wins what the main function of the custom console custom console it is to create one window okay and put all the things you need to configure in it so for example if i need to configure the dns i need to open the, the dns console in one window and then if i need to configure the active directory users and computers i need to open uh, one window that contains the windows active directory console and then we will if i need to configure the group policy management i need to open a window that contains the group policy management console and the same so all of this every one of them needs a separate window with its console in it so what we will do we will create a custom console and put all of these in it so you will have only one window that contains all of the programs that you need you can configure it from one window in one place okay uh, this is better than configuring uh, different items in different windows so here you will have six or seven windows to configure each one of them but in the custom console we have only one window that you can configure all of them from it okay and then we have created our a group policy uh, central store location okay in the sysvol folder we have discussed what is the benefits of creating an active directory group policy central store what is the benefits and how we can create it okay this was was uh, was discussed in the previous video please refer my previous video for more info and then we have uh, a group of group policy templates for the firefox chrome classic shell and office all of these are copied and added to the active directory group policy center store location so by doing this we can not only configure just a minute so now by adding these group policy templates to our Active Directory Group Policy Center Store. We can control not only the Windows setting for for the uh, different servers and workstations, but we can control the Firefox setting, the Chrome setting, the Classic Shell setting, and the Office setting. And then after that, we have a login script that we need to implement to all of the Active Directory users. So this script, I have copied it to the sysvol folder under the scripts folder this is the location the location that you should put any login script you need to apply it to the active directory users this should be uh, put in this location sysvol folder under scripts and under it all of this we have showed it in the previous video and then we after that we have created our active directory dc comics heroes and villains users and, com and groups and group members and group members okay and robots and computers using powershell scripts and at the end we have uh, configured our active directory user properties for all of our active directory users 
to implement the my computer uh, uh, login script this uh, the login script I needed I need to apply it on all of my Active Directory users so to do this we need to open the properties for every act Active Directory user and in the login script uh, field we need to type my computer.bat as I said before my computer.bat it will be in the sysvol folder scripts folder okay so this is the location we have discussed this all in the previous video uh, please refer to my previous video for more info this video will, we will discuss how we can uh, create the department shares okay and the user uh, home directory uh, folder share what is the department shares or what is what is the home uh, what is the user home directory folder share i will show you all a small a small graph explaining this okay what is what is a department share just a minute here we have if this is our domain controller we will install file server role on it okay and uh, what is the file server or what is the function of the file server this is the central location okay uh, that users from uh, all of my uh, domain can put their important files on it so this is the main function of the file server file server it is a central location that our users in the domain or the network can put their important files on it or store their important or, or, or important files on it so how this will be done we will install the file server role on our active directory or our domain controller and then this is the hard disk of the file server we will have or we will create uh, the department folders we will create a, a folder for the IT folder for the HR and folder for all of the departments okay and folder for the HOD or the department heads okay or head of departments HR is the human resources this for the IT so these folders will be created on the hard disk of the file server and then we will share them okay we will share this folders so uh, the different uh, active directory users or groups can access these folders so you cannot access these folders unless they are shared okay so we will share these folders and then we will assign or we will uh, give permission to a certain active directory group to access this folder for example the IT group will access the IT folder or will access the IT shared folder and the HR group will access the shared HR folder and the global share group will access the global shared uh, folder this is a folder that is available for all of the departments so this is available for the IT department this is available for the HR department this will be available for all of the three departments the department head head at the department HR and IT okay and at the end also this is the HOD folder the HOD group will have access to the HOD shared folder so the first step to create the folders share them and then give certain groups the right to access these folders okay so uh, how we can for example here we have give the IT group uh, permissions to access the shared IT folder but but what they can do with or what they will do with this shared folder or what is the permissions assigned to them uh, on this folder here is the permissions for example here we can see that for example this is the uh, IT folder IT folder we have give them uh, the IT group it's not Marvel the DC IT group okay will have full control on the server and we have two permissions one is called SMB permissions and the other is called NTFS permissions okay these both permissions control what the IT group will do on this shared folder okay so we give the IT uh, full control on this folder uh, by using NTFS permissions and SMB share permissions someone asked me why we put two permissions that are typical on one shared folder or on the same folder we have two permissions that are identical or the same folder this is like you have a safe with two keys so if you have a safe with one key it's not a security or it is not secure if but if you have two keys for a safe then it will be much but much much better so we have the IT will have full control on the IT shared folder this will be full control on uh, NTFS permissions and SMB shared permissions okay as for the HOD shared folder the HOD uh, uh, group okay will have modify on this folder uh, as as NTFS permissions and we will have change 
on this folder uh, with the SMB share permissions. So they have two permissions, one to modify when working with NTFS share permissions, and the other one is a change when we uh, work with the uh, SMB share permissions, okay? So uh, modify and change is less in uh, permissions or less than the full control, okay? So uh, modify is the uh, second permission under full control so this will be less than full control permission but it's still more it's still powerful so uh, the HOD uh, department group or the HOD group can modify this folder and its content and they can change this folder and its content and I will have the IT to have full control on this folder as well okay and as for the HR we will give the HR group uh, the modify permission on this folder or the shared HR folder and the change permission on this HR folder. This is SMB permissions and this is NTFS permissions and also I will give the IT full control on it. Okay, so the IT will have full control on the full folders and each department its respective active directory group will have modify and change permissions on uh, the uh, department folder. So HOD department will have modify and change on the HOD shared folder HR will have uh, the the HR shared folder the uh, Active Directory HR group will have change and modify on it the IT will have full control the global share will have uh, change and modify also and we have a group that we called uh, DC underscore all users this is a group that will contain all of the users of the Active Directory uh, domain or the DC Comics domain so this implies that Marvel all users will contain users from the HOD the HR and the IT so this group will have modify on the folder and also this group will have change on the folder anyway this is the way that this will be applied or this is the structure of uh, the folders shares uh, uh, the sharing of the folder and the permissions for each group on each shared folder how this will be done it will be done through a script so let's show you how this process will be done here we will have a folder called department shares okay this is the main folder and then we will have four folders under it it's global share HR IT and HOD these four folders will be created using a script okay so this will be created using a script and then we will have uh, two uh, share perm uh, two permissions on each folder NTFS permissions with the blue uh, color and SMB share permissions with the green color okay so this also will be done using two scripts we will have a script that will have SMB share permissions on each folder and we have another script that will apply NTFS share permissions or each folder okay when we apply the SMB share permissions with a script this permissions will be added and he will remove the everyone group from each folder by default everyone group when you share a folder okay through the SMB permissions okay they will you have by default when you share these folders using the SMB share permissions you will have a group called everyone so should as a security a practice or a best practice to remove everyone from the share permissions of each folder okay so this is will done through the SMB share permissions script it will put the SMB share permissions and remove everyone group from every uh, share uh, every department share okay so this will be done we have an SMB share permission script NTFS share permission script and the folder will create all of the folder uh, and, the, and the script will create all of the subfolders in this in this main OU or, or sorry uh, this main folder I will show you this in the video don't worry and then at the end okay what we will have we can see here that when for example this user okay this is called widow this is an active directory user called widow this is uh, this is Natasha Romanoff okay in the uh, Marvel uh, Marvel Universe anyway so when this user logs in with its active directory user account you will have its department share appear so this widow is it it, sh it is a member of the human resources group so you will have the HR 
share appear for it as a map to drive and this is also uh, the global share as i said before the global share it is shared between all of the departments so it will appear for here as well and here user home directory folder will appear for here this i will discuss it in a couple of seconds so we will have two shares appearing for here as mapped drive this for the hr share because she is a member of the hr group and this is the global share because she is also a member of the global share uh, group okay how this drives or how this shares of the departments will be mapped uh, as network drives and we will have letter m and o this will be done through a group policy mapping group policy okay department shares mapping letters okay so we'll have every department share for example this is the department share of the hr it will be mapped as network drive m and the it will also have each uh, share as uh, mapped as m and as for the department heads we have their department share mapped as n and for the global share this will be shared between all of the departments so we have it as o okay so every department will have its uh, uh, drive or its share mapped as a network drive and you will see its name on it for example if Karim is logging in so you will see HR and instead of it you will see IT and in, in front of it M okay so and you will see global share O and I will see my home or user home folder okay so we will have our uh, department shares mapped as network drives through using a group policy as for the user home directory folder will be mapped according to another process okay so this is how we will create the department shares how we will uh, map it as network drives what is the process of creating it this is the uh, directory or this is the department shares let's go to the uh, user home folder okay So also sorry guys I need to show you all a little bit of something else here uh, okay here we go that I forgot to say for example here we can see that this is an IT PC when you log in with you and you are a member of the IT okay you will see you will see the IT folder okay as we show as I show you in a couple of minutes so every pc for example the it pc the hr pc the hod pc everyone when he logs in with his username and he is a member of this uh, department okay for you for example i'm a member of the it department so i log in on the it pc i am a member of the hr department i log in on the hr pc and i am a member of the department head of departments so i log on the head of departments pc when i log in on hpc with my active directory user i should see the shares or the department share as i so show you all in this uh, this is screenshot okay so anyway let's go to the home user folder as for the home user folder this is the same concept we will have our file server and we have this the hard disk of the file server and then for every active directory user he will have a folder of his own this folder he can put his personal data on it this will be shared okay to the user and he will have full control on this shared folder for example here we have in this uh, uh, DC comics domain we will have for example about maybe 60 users so every user will have a folder of his own okay these are the folders they will be shared okay and uh, they will be shared and every share the user will have full control on it for example this is uh, the active directory user Kera of he will have a folder by his name it will be his user home folder directory or private share let's say this and he will have full control on this folder so superman can't access this folder or uh, he can't access this folder and he can't see it okay so he will have only superman will have only access on his uh, user home folder directory which is shared and he will have full control on it so we will have full control on his shared folder okay or user home directory folder and Karim will have full control on his uh, uh, home user folder or shared home user folder okay so everyone will have uh, in the active directory will have his personal uh, folder or user home folder to put his data on it okay so we will have 
these are the folders and and shared and we'll give permissions or for control for every user on his folder and this will be done also using two permissions so here we have kera off this is the active directory user he will have full control on his user home directory folder we will have ntfs permissions as full control and smb share permissions as full control also okay so we have two permissions one is ntfs and the other is smb share permissions the same concept okay we'll have these and these okay so this is like the department shares we have the same process okay and then we will log in to the pc we will have everyone for example kareem raouf we will see his uh, kareem uh, user home directory folder and if superman access on his pc he will see his superman uh, superman folder for where it is okay abin sur superman folder anyway so how this will appear in the uh, let me show you all just a minute here we go so here for example the same uh, same screenshot here we do will access with here active directory user he will they will see or it will see her department shares and the and her user home directory folder it will be named on her name so the active directory username will be widow and her home user directory will be named as widow and it will be mapped um, will be uh, mapped as a network drive okay with her name on it and with the letter l okay this will be done using a script okay how is the process will be done so let's get it from another uh, another thing here we go we will create a folder and we name it users okay users and then we will use a script that will create the subfolders or a folder for every active directory user and will give the correspondent active directory user full control on it for example we have 60 uh, active directory users so we will have 60 folders created under users folder and every active directory user will have full control on, on his uh, created folder for example the user care of active director care of will have full control on his folder and will have his uh, home user directory mapped as a network drive l okay for example vision will have uh, will have his user or, or have his home user directory folder named on his name for example my user home directory folder be named according to my active directory name and we have full control on it so the same will be done every user have full control on his uh, user home folder directory after running this script if we go to the active directory users okay for example this is a user and this active directory user properties we can see in the tab of profile we see that the home folder we will see that the l will be selected and our uh, active directory uh, uh, or the, our home folder will be created automatically okay our home folder will be created automatically okay but just to note okay what we will do we will only create um, the main folder called users we will share it okay and give uh, domain users uh, permissions on this folder for control the group called domain users this is a default or this is a, a default active directory group that is created when you install the active directory and promote the server to be a domain controller there is a default or built-in active directory group called domain users this contains all of the users in the active directory or in the domain so we will give this group on this folder full control okay this what we will do we will share it and we give it smb share permissions as uh, full control for the group called domain users and as ntfs we will give it also full full control so we'll give it an ntfs share permission as full control and we'll give it smb share permissions as full control for the group called domain users okay so this will be done this is the script or this is the way it will be done and at the end i showed you all that we will see that widow is a group uh, or is a member of uh, the HR groups you will see it will see its department share it will see the global share it will see its uh, ho user home directory folder and we it will be named according to her active directory username and should be mapped as an L drive okay 
this will be discussed it in this video we'll discuss the department shares we have discussed it and the user home uh, folder uh, and the user home folder share this also we have discussed it and we will discuss another thing we will discuss uh, creating our group policies okay so we will begin applying or begin implementing a couple of group policies on our uh, active directory users for example here is the structure we can see that we have this is our main uh, organizational unit in our active directory it's called dcsh and we have one two three four five six admins this is the organizational unit that will contain our it personnel terminals this will contain our uh, domain workstations and the robots this also will contain our domain workstations uh, security groups organization unit will contain our active directory security groups and the uh, uh, organization and unit called servers this will, will contain our domain servers okay and the last one it, the organization unit is called users this will contain all of our domain uh, active directory users uh, excluding okay the IT that I have put in the domain uh, and put it in the OU admins organization unit so we'll have each one of these organization units will have a couple of group policies applied to them okay so let's first discuss the different group policies that we will apply all of this i've discussed when we were when we were creating the marvel domain but i'll discuss it in in short we will have one two three four five six seven we have seven group policies the first will be applied so we'll have something called default to domain policy default domain policy contains policies that will apply to all organization units this is a global policy will be applied will be applied to all of the active directory uh, objects or, or it will be, be applied to all of the active directory organizational units give an give us an example for example like the password account or the active directory account uh, password policies for example if you need a password policy to be for example uh, seven characters for the for the password it will be complex or not uh, uh, the account lock duration the account lock uh, trials okay all of this are uh, uh, configured in the default domain policy and for example if you need to have a welcome message or notification message when you access the domain this also should be done through the default domain policy and changing the local administrator account also this can be done through the default domain policy so the default domain policy it is the global policy will be applied to all of the organization units of the active directory okay and then we have another policy called mapping policy we have been discussing this from a couple of minutes ago it will map the department shares according uh, to some drive letters and i have discussed this before and then we will have something called wsos policy uh, what is a wsos i can show you a, a small graph just a minute So what is a WSOS? A WSOS we will have our server, our domain, a domain controller, and we will install on it something called WSOS. WSOS is called Windows Server Update Services. Okay, uh, let's discuss uh, a small concept before this, uh, uh, discussing what is a WSOS. It's called Windows Server Update Services. Every workstation in the domain, for example, or server have an operating system there is updates that will be issued for this operating system to fix bugs or to update some features so if you are working without a wsos every workstation for or, or computer will go to the internet and go to the website of microsoft to get the different updates so imagine that you have four pcs all of them are accessing the internet at the same time and all of them are getting uh, the different uh, operating system updates so you will have a lot of internet traffic you will have a lot of updates repeatedly downloaded for example if you have if you have two uh, workstations that have the same operating system every one of them will download the same update twice okay so this is uh, this will be uh, uh, repeatedly or this is unnecessary space and bandwidth taken and in the same time this will take a lot of bandwidth from the internet especially if they are updating themselves on uh, the same time so multiple updates lots of internet bandwidth consumed so let's go here to the WSOS here we will have our domain controller for example this is uh, a traditional work group scenario so if we go to the domain and we have our domain controller we have WSOS installed and then 
on the hard disk of the WSOS server or, or on the hard disk of the domain controller that we have WSOS server installed or WSOS server role installed on it okay just a minute so here we will have our uh, server domain controller we have WSOS uh, role installed on it and this is the hard disk of the domain controller okay we will have a folder created on this hard disk of the server and then we will download all of the updates needed by our different workstations on this hard disk of the server and then we will distribute it once to all of our our, our workstations so uh, every workstation will not go and get its update no the server will go and download all of the updates on its hard disk so every workstation will not as I said before go outside to the internet to get the updates the server will go to the internet talk to the Microsoft website or the Microsoft uh, works Microsoft servers and get all of the updates installed on its hard disk or, or downloaded on its hard disk and then it will distribute uh, the different updates to the different workstations and servers this will be done or the distribution process okay of the updates and the workstations will and the servers will know how to communicate with the WSOS server and how to download the updates according to a group policy so here the WSOS will uh, download the updates on its hard disk and then the workstations will go and talk to the WSOS server and download the updates from the uh, WSOS server on the hard disk that we have downloaded the updates before okay how they will communicate to the WSOS server how they will know its IP address and its name this will be done through a group policy okay so this will be done from this group policy okay this group policy okay and we have a couple of things also concerning this WSOS group policy not only it will distribute the name of the server and its IP address so the workstations okay can communicate with the server and get the updates but we have another uh, thing to do with this group policy or we have another function or we can configure the WSOS group policy to do another thing so here guys we use this WSOS policy to distribute the name and the IP of the WSOS server to the different workstations and servers in the domain so they can communicate with the WSOS server and download their updates okay and also through the WSOS policy we will control for example if uh, the updates will be installed automatically all the user on the workstation should install this update manually this will be done through the WSOS policy and also if the the updates will be installed automatically and they need restart okay should the user make a restart by himself or should this be done through the WSOS group policy automatically so through the WSOS policy we will uh, distribute the IP and the name of the WSOS server through the different workstations and server can communicate with the WSOS to get their updates uh, the uh, installation of the updates should it be done automatically or done by the user the restart to the machine after the updates should this be done manually or automatically by the WSOS policy okay this is the WSOS policy and then we have something called classic shell policy admin and classic shell policy limited this is a program that before will change the layout of the start menu of Windows 10 from this uh, shape to the wi Windows 7 shape so these two group policies will control uh, what users will see from this interface so the group policy admin this is for the IT I have opened all of the menus and items in this program for the IT group okay so I apply this group policy on the IT group as for the classic shell limited I have removed some icons from this program uh, uh, the limited or the active directory user should not see the, see it okay so this is two group policies will control uh, the shape and the menus that will appear for the users in this program okay and we have at last two group policies one for advanced users group policy and one for default users group policy these group policies will control who will see or who will access the USB and DVD ROM the advanced users group will uh, can access or allowed to have access to the USB and DVD as for the default user they are forbidden or they will we will disable USB and DVD for them okay so this is the seven group policies that we will apply 
which will be applied to each to which organizational unit we have the default domain policy it, we, it will be applied to all of the organizational unit for example the admins this is the organization unit that will contain the IT will have the default domain policy applied the mapping domain policy applied the classic shell policy the domain uh, the classic shell policy uh, admin applied mapping policy default domain policy to apply a group policy we need to have two things first we need to link it to an organizational unit okay and not only this we need to also to define what kind of objects in this organizational unit this group policy will be applied to so here we say that it, is, it will be applied to authenticated users okay so this will be applied to users active directory objects okay and by default this is there is a group in the active directory called authenticated users every user in the active directory that have uh, access his pc successfully through using his username and password he will be added in this group so we will have our default domain policy applied to the admins organizational unit we will have our mapping policy applied to our admins organizational unit we have our classic shell policy admin will be applied to this organizational unit and will be applied to the users okay so here we have three different policies applied to the admins organization unit that contain our IT personnel and then we have the terminals this contains computers okay it will be also applied default name policy will be applied to it the mapping policy and the WSOS policy okay this will be applied to authenticated users anyway it should be applied to everything in this organization unit so we'll have these three different group policies applied okay we'll have our WSOS group policy our mapping policy default to domain policy also we'll have the robots default to domain policy mapping policy WSOS policy all will be uh, applied to the active directory user objects it should if these are computers this should be applied to uh, not authenticated users to authenticated computers or or to computer objects anyway it is done in the active directory by this way so anyway security groups will not have any organizationally will not have any policy applied to it except of the default domain policy and then on the servers organization that will have the default domain policy mapping policy WSOS policy also to authenticated users and we have something called default to domain controller policy this policy will only be applied to domain controllers okay and at last we will have our users organization unit that will contain all of our active directory domain users except of the IT that will be put in the admins organization unit we will have the default domain policy applied to them and then we'll have our classic shell limited applied and the advanced users group policy applied and the default users group policy applied here is the trick the advanced users group policy will not be applied to authenticated users but will be applied to a group called DC advanced this is the users in this group I want them to have the uh, USB and DVD opened for them so I him I specifying a certain uh, active directory users or certain active directory group to apply this group policy to it okay and we, this will be done through the security filtering section okay and we have the default users group policy this uh, group uh, I will apply this group policy to them because I need to uh, disable USB and DVD to this active directory group so this group policy will have USB and DVD uh, disabled and it will be applied to this active directory security group and this group policy will have the USB and DVD opened and it will be applied to this active directory uh, security group so this is in in brief what we will discuss in this video theoretically we will now go to the section or we will go to the video and we will begin applying them in a practical way so please hold with me as I said before this is the WSOS okay the WSOS we will have the updates he will get to the internet we will save it on the hard disk and then the workstations will go and communicate with the WSOS server and it will uh, ask for the updates and then the server will go to its hard disk take the updates and distribute it to the organization or distribute it to the uh, workstations and servers in the domain one central location and one download uh, session and less internet bandwidth consumed so here we have only one server accessing the internet getting the updates once okay so we are and we can do this in the midnight so we do not consume more internet in the work group uh, solution there is four 
workstation getting the same updates or different updates and a lot of bandwidth consumed this is only one machine with one internet connection and with one download not multiple downloads or with one type of download okay and this we will have it more uh, so it's a centralized location download one download session and less internet bandwidth consumed this is one pc downloading different uh, updates and saving it to its hard disk this is our different pcs downloading different updates so this is we will discuss in the video so let's go to the practical uh, part of the lab and we'll begin see how we can apply all of this just a minute so let's begin our practical uh, part of this lab so here in the previous video have been uh, implemented the login script okay that will be implemented on every user in our active directory when he logs in for the first time we can see that the pc name it is uh, the, the disk the this pc icon appears on desktop and it was changed from this pc to the name of the computer and we have our uh, keyboard layout english and arabic installed and we have the time zone to be cairo all of these are uh, written in the script and implemented on the user then we will begin applying or creating our uh, seven group policies and applying them to our different organizational units okay anyway here just to take a note I have here all of the group policies uh, in this folder they are import they are exported from a previous video or a previous lab so these are uh, ready configured group policies okay I have exported them and then we will import them to our active directory but before importing them we will create seven group policies with the same names that I have uh, exported from the previous lab okay and then we will begin importing each uh, group policy to its correspondent uh, uh, blank policy one by one so here we will for example here we will create seven group policies that are with the same name that i have exported from the previous lab and they are blank and then we will import every uh, group policy name to its correspondent blank group policy name we will see that in a moment so don't worry we'll see that practically so here this is the group policies names and the group policies uh, configuration so we will begin creating blank policies and then we will import every policy to its correspondent every uh, uh, full policy or every configured policy to its we will import it to its uh, correspondent blank group policy okay so here we have created a blank policy called advanced users group policy and then we will create another one called classic shell policy admin and then we will create classic shell policy limited <laughs> actually guys I have I am repeating the same process because I have done this with the Marvel domain we have done all of these steps before from creating the users groups group policies department shares home user folder I have done all of this in the Marvel domain so this is uh, repeated steps for the same uh, thing okay so you can refer to my Marvel domain uh, videos or you can uh, just to know more okay so here we are creating how much policies now we have one two three four five six seven we have seven blank policies and then we'll begin importing each policy okay so here we will go and tell him import setting and then we go to the folder that I have my exported group policies in and then we begin importing each group policy okay so here I have my exported group policies in just a minute and then I have my group policy on my desktop okay in a folder called DC domain and then yes here it is and then okay and then I import the first one I will import advanced users group policy 
next so we have here uh, seven group ready-made group policies or seven exported group policy so I import the advanced users group policy from here to here or for from this fully configured group policy will be imported to this blank policy and they have the same name and we repeat the whole process for the remaining of the other group policies okay <laughs> so this is the first group policy imported this to control the USB and DVD this is group policy to allow certain uh, active directory security groups to have their USB and DVD uh, uh, allowed or opened okay and then we'll go to the classic shell policy admin to control the classic shell uh, menus okay this is for the IT we have all of the classic shell menus and icons available for them and as for the limited classic shell we have certain menus and items in the classic shell to appear for the rest of the domain users except for the IT okay okay we need to click ok on this folder okay okay this notification we need to click on it and we should do this also for uh, the default domain controllers also so you need to click on both and accept ok when the notification appears this is basically telling you that your group policy location is changed to the this whole folder and there is some conflict between the new location and uh, the rights or some there is some conflicts when you have changed your group policy location from C Windows group policy uh, or C Windows policy definitions to SysVol folder there is some conflict in the permissions and this okay will fix these permissions okay so we need to do this for the domain default domain policy and uh, the default domain controllers policy okay So we tell him OK. <coughs> and then we import the mapping policy. and the WSOS policy so now after importing all of the policies we will begin uh, changing some uh, setting in certain group policies and we will change some security filtering uh, in some or the, we will begin playing in the security filtering section in some group policies especially for the advanced users group policy and the default users group policy because we need them to be applied to certain active directory security groups so here we just uh, the first thing is to uh, I need to have a certain background to be applied to all of the active directory users in the domain so this will be the background I'm just preparing it these are all backgrounds I and I am uh, renaming them because I need certain background to be applied with a certain name because uh, in the group policy the file for the background is named background gbg okay so I have another background I will name it background okay so this will be applied okay we will see this don't worry this all this all are certain uh, backgrounds and screen savers and uh, lock screens to be applied to all of our active directory users in the domain of DC comics okay so I just preparing them okay you will see that in a moment for example the, the lock screen will be applied from the file named lock to jpg 
this was an old one and the background will be applied and it is called background so this is an old background one and this is lock one okay these are old backgrounds and lock screens so the file is lock and the file is background and uh, we'll have certain things okay also applied So now I'm just preparing uh, the lock screens and the lock screen and the background. Okay. So now we'll go to the default domain policy and then we will begin uh, configuring the background that will appear for the users, the lock screen that will appear for the users, the screen saver that will appear for the users. Okay. And this will be uh, uh, taken or it will be. Uh, uh, it will be implemented from the folder that we were working in it from a couple of seconds which folder is called backgrounds okay so anyway we will begin changing okay the uh, the background here we'll go to the control panel personalize and then the first thing is to uh, force a specific lock screen and login image here this is the first thing control the lock screen here this is from the previous uh, vi uh, previous lab for the marvel domain so it's lock.jpg and the share it's dc dc01 this is our first domain controller or our dc comics first domain controller it's dc dc01 and the share folder is backgrounds the one that we were working on from a couple of seconds and this is the location of the lock screen the share location of the lock screen jpg And this is a couple of uh, group policies applied preventing uh, the changing or uh, prevent the lock screen camera to be uh, applied prevent the changing of the lock screen and the image and here we will begin uh, also changing the from the control panel and personalize okay we will uh, enable a screen saver and then we will choose the location of the screen saver okay this is the enabling and there is a protection or force a specific screen saver so no one can be able to change the screen saver and we have a protection on the screen saver if anyone needs to log in to his uh, pc after the lock uh, after the screen saver is uh, applied he need to put a password anyway this is the new location of the uh, screen saver for the uh, DC Comics, it's called DC. The screen saver is called DC. Dot S uh, C R. And here we have still this is load specific theme. This is a Windows theme. We have also a Windows theme to be applied. The themes are the uh, the colors and the fonts of the Windows 10 menus. Okay. And the backgrounds and and so and so the background of the menu uh, the the color of the menus the font of the menus all of these are called uh, there is uh, a theme i have installed to play with all of these settings okay so this theme is called ss okay this is the name ss dot theme okay I think I need to pass it real quickly just to okay anyway so this is the theme it's SS the theme okay and then we need the last thing is to apply the uh, the uh, background okay so we need to apply the background
but because I forgot okay but I will show you all how we can change the background but the, because the background is still not applied the one that I need because it will not be applied because the location also of the background so anyway I have forgot to uh, change the background because the old background its location is not correct so it will not be applied so now here uh, we need to link okay we have our group policies finished we need to link every group policy to its correspondent organizational unit okay we have I have showed you all 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 of this in the graph so we have our default to domain policy applied to all organizational units and also the map the mapping policy the WSOS policy will be applied to the terminals organizational unit and the same as in the graph so this is the linking process of the, uh, the group policies okay so we will have our advanced users group policy linked to our organization and unit users and we will have also the default users group policy it's uh, this is missing because I didn't create it okay or I didn't create it and import it okay so we need to do this this is the group policy that will block the USB or disable the USB and DVD for the users we need it to also to be linked to the users organizational unit so we have two group policies advanced users group policy and default users group policy they will be linked to the, to the same organizational unit and we will uh, uh, control which users in this organizational unit both group policies will be applied to through groups okay so in the organization unit we have a lot of users and we have two organization units okay uh, so and we have two uh, group policies so every group policy will be applied to certain users in this organization unit through using the groups or the active directory security groups we will see that in a moment so now we have users applied advanced users group policy and default users group policy we need to in the security filtering to apply uh, these group policies to certain active directory groups or security groups the classic shell admin will be applied to the admins and the uh, classic shell limited will be applied to the normal users okay So now here we'll go to the security filtering section and remove authenticated users okay and then we will add the advanced users uh, or the DC comics uh, advanced users gr uh, group okay this DC advanced users group I have added certain users in this DC advanced users group so this group will have uh, group that contains certain users will have USB and DVD open for them here when we remove authenticated users it will say that group policy requires each computer account to have at least read permissions okay so he can read this group policy and apply it okay so uh, this is done automatically before you remove the authenticated users this was already done okay or this already it's it's working you don't need to add it is saying that you need to have each computer to have permissions to read the gpo from a domain controller in order for the user group policy setting to be applied okay so he's saying that so just a minute you need to have a computer every computer in the domain to have read permission so he can read this group policy and apply it okay so this was done or this was already in place when you have in the security filtering section authenticated users group here okay so this was done okay but as soon as you remove it okay this needs certain preparations so if you remove authenticated users and add any other 
security group you need to go to the delegation and add uh, a group called domain computers this contains all of our active directory domain computers and give it read permission on the group policy okay so uh, the group policy can be applied okay what if we add the security group and we didn't go to the delegation and add uh, uh, the group that called domain computers and give it read permissions the group policy will not be applied so you need to do two steps if you remove authenticated users you need to add another security group and then go to the delegation and choose a group called domain computers this is a default or a built-in active directory group that contains all of the computers in the domain or all of the computer objects in the domain is in this built-in group you need to give it a read permission on the uh, group policy this should be done if you remove the authenticated users group from the group policy security filtering so for example if we have the default to domain policy and we have authenticated users in it and everything is linked so we don't need to do this step uh, as long as you have authenticated users in the security filtering but what if you don't need uh, uh, this group policy to apply to all users okay you need it to apply to certain users so here you need to change the authenticated users group to another group so if you do this you need to remove it put the active directory security group you need and then you go to the delegation and add the active directory built-in group called domain computers and give it read to this group policy so the group policy can be applied and implemented if you didn't do this this will do the group policy will not be applied it's not enough to add only the security group no you need to add the security group and the delegation okay this is what this uh, let's go there again sorry again no again so here this what tells you okay it tells you what i am discussing now he's saying group policy requires each account to have permissions to read group policy each group policy requires each computer account to have permissions to read group policy data from a domain controller in order for user group policy setting to be successfully applied removing the authenticated users group may prevent the processing of user group policies please add the domain computers or the authenticated user security group with at least three permissions so he is giving you a choice if you add authenticated users so that's fine if you add another group you need to add the domain computers and give it a read permission so this is the thing that the, this warning is telling us so we have two group policies we need it to be applied to certain uh, active directory security groups so we will add these groups here we have a group called DC advanced users this group contains a couple of users that I need the USB to be open to them and then <laughs> we'll go to the delegation and then we will add domain computers domain computers and give it a read permission okay we don't need to do this un uh, uh, unless the uh, security filtering contains the authenticated users security group okay so here we have done this and then we will go to the uh, we will go to the uh, default users group policy and then we will remove authenticated users okay and then we will go to the we will add the group the, okay which is DC default users go to the delegation and add actually this I have encountered it in uh, in a production environment this was an update for Microsoft that changes the how the group policy works so I wasn't informed with this uh, update and what uh, it ha has done in my environment so I discovered it because some of my users didn't have some group policies apply to them because I was using uh, not authenticated users group other groups so I have discovered it when I searched Google and found this uh, in a certain security bulletin or a security 
uh, report okay or something so I discovered it and I began applying it and I took care of uh, uh, when I uh, create any group policy after that anyway so now we have uh, our group policies ready I just have two things to do I will install uh, uh, I will install something called 7-zip this is a program free program for extract and uh, compressing files extract zip files and compressing to zip file or compressing files okay so this is called 7-zip I will download it actually I can download it from the machine itself because it has access to the internet but I didn't recognize this fact at the time okay but you have access to the internet through the Azure uh, virtual machine but and actually it's much more faster because it's working through the uh, US uh, network or the US uh, uh, internet providers which, which uh, of course is much much better than here anyway so we have our 7-zip we will go and download the 64-bit version of this uh, program and we will install also the classic shell on uh, the server or the domain controller so we can see our classic shell group policy in action Here, copy it and uh, paste it in through the remote desktop connection on the desktop of the domain controller and then begin installing it So this is the uh, pack, the theme pack for the DC Comics, okay. Anyway, I can pass this real quickly because I have already done this before. Just a minute. Sorry, just a minute here. This is the theme, okay, and... So now we will restart to the server and see our group policies in action. We need to see uh, the different changes that will be done on this server after applying the group policy, the default domain policy, uh, the classic shell policy. First of all, I can see here that I didn't uh, install the classic shell, so I need first to install it. So here I need to install the classic shell. But before that, I don't, I don't, I don't need to restart it first. I need to install the classic shell, so I can see my classic shell group policy applied. So before restarting, I will go and download the classic shell and uh, install it on the server. Also, I didn't recognize or I didn't uh, see the fact that I can access the internet through the Azure virtual machine. So I don't need to go to my laptop and uh, access it and then download it and then upload it. So all of this is not necessary. Anyway, this is the classic shell uh, 4.3.1. And download it.
then I will go and copy and paste the program and install it So now I will install the classic shell. So now we can restart the server, okay, and see our uh, group policies in action. What I am doing, I don't know, just wait for a moment, I think I am, uh, yes, here, <coughs> I am uh, changing the, uh, the security setting, just a moment, just a moment, guys, so here in the security section here, we are applying, or I am telling him to, this come called this in the security option something called interactive login message this is the matches that will appear for me when uh, I first log into the domain it will say DC comics uh, domain this is a restricted area and so on so this will be you can uh, change it from two things interactive interactive login message title and interactive login message this interactive login title the title of the message and then the body of the message is something called interactive login message okay you i will see that when it comes but this is how we can configure it to have uh, uh, a welcome screen that says that this is dc comics uh, domain and you are restricted to access it this is done through interactive login message title from security options okay and the uh, default to domain uh, policy through the computer configuration interactive login message title and interactive login message okay so uh, this is done through it just a minute let's do it mm -hmm. So here you, you can't restart it through the remote desktop connection. You need to restart it from or restart the server from the Azure uh, cloud interface. Okay. Restart. Here is this. You see something here, guys. He's saying to you some advices. For example, this is also a good thing from Azure. It says that you you need to enable backup option in the Azure virtual machine to protect your data from corruption and accidental deletion or deletion okay or delete deletion okay so this is a good thing that you can open the option of uh, auto backup of the virtual machine but this I said before it will cost you so you need to know 
this option how much it it will cost you but in a production environment this option should be uh, opened actually okay because this is a good thing you need to have a backup plan for all of your servers this is something like taking a backup of your server okay so this is a very good step so you need to enable it if you are working in a production azure environment but you need to know the cost anyway If you log in again to the DC DC01 domain controller, so here you can see that this is the interactive login uh, login message title DC Comic Studio, and this is the interactive login message this is done from the security options in the windows setting under the computer configuration in the default uh, domain policy okay as we see here that the background is uh, is it is black or it is blank okay so this is because the group policy uh, uh, didn't work for the background because the location of the background uh, jpg or the background uh, picture is not correct the location of the background picture is not correct or it's not co uh, correctly configured in the group policy so we will do this now we will go and correct this error we'll go to the default domain policy and then we'll go to the section of the uh, background or to apply the background and we will give it the new location of uh, the background picture the background uh, uh, image okay so it's in administrative templates but I don't know it, it is in the users section user configuration this uh, should be done through another thing just a minute not here also no again just a minute okay here you go this is through the users configuration desktop desktop and then desktop wallpaper okay this is the location so again what we have done here that we have just a minute okay we'll go to the desktop wallpaper we will change okay the location of the background we need to restart the domain controller so we have changed it or correct the location of the background screen saver oh sorry the background uh, picture or image and we're restarting the domain controller so we can log in now and see if our background is applied or not so we can see the background is applied successfully and all of our login script is applied our uh, keyboard layout English and Arabic, the Cairo time zone, the PC uh, icon and name, PC the computer name and the uh, uh, computer icon appearing on our desktop. So we have everything applied. We now need to uh, create another Azure virtual machine that will be our second domain controller in our DC Comics domain. So now we will create the second domain controller. Okay which will act also act as a file server and uh, a WSOS server and a lot of things so we will put it in the resource group DC domain and we will name it DCDC02 okay and we put it in the US central 
region or data center region this is where our resource group and uh, our DC Comics resource group and Azure uh, and uh, DC Comics virtual network are created in the US central uh, US central uh, a central data center and we put the second domain control in, in our availability uh, DC Comics availability set we have discussed this in the previous video so uh, this is already discussed if you need to know what is an availability set uh, please uh, refer to my previous video okay I have discussed this before just a moment okay so now we have put our second domain controller in uh, we will create it on the US central data center region and we put it in our availability set we have put our first domain controller in the same availability set and our uh, we have uh, put our first domain controller in the same availability set and our second domain controller will be in the same availability set we have discussed what is an availability set this we are telling Microsoft that by putting our two domain controllers in this availability set we need at least one of them to be online so if you are doing any maintenance plans or something please take care that one of our domain controllers should be uh, up and running so if you have a lot of servers you can distribute the Azure virtual machines or different on different servers in the same data center region just to uh, overcome the problem of maintenance of s or uh, maintenance plan of some of the servers or, or the maintenance plan uh, uh, of the servers that may contain one of our Azure virtual machines okay so we have our uh, domain controller and we have the availability set we have it in our availability set we have created before we will have uh, Windows Server 2019 installed on it She is telling us that there is certain uh, images to be applied or certain uh, uh, sorry certain uh, uh, certain images yes also to be applied we have Windows Server 2019 and we have our local administrator Kera of and the virtual machine have one CPU and 3.5 gigabyte of RAM and we have our uh, the firewall to allow uh, I will allow all of them HTTP, HTTPS, SSH and uh, RDP RDP to allow remote desktop connection program and SSH if you need to connect to your virtual machine through using SSH protocol and HTTP and HTTPS if you need to have web servers on this server anyway we will have another uh, hard disk added to this virtual machine okay the virtual machine has already a hard disk that is 150 gigabyte and it's uh, made in one partition it's C and then we have a temporary uh, partition which is it's D this is a temporary partition or a temporary uh, hard disk that it's not available all the time and then we will have uh, another hard disk that will make it uh, 20 gigabyte okay this we will have uh, this second hard disk we will have our uh, department shares and user home folders uh, uh, created on it and stored on it okay so we need uh, a hard disk with uh, a larger space so we can put our users uh, department shares or we'll put our important uh, department share files and ho and users files on it by creating department shares and creating user home folder shares okay so we will add a second hard disk it will be uh, we'll change it from premium SSD to a normal hard disk uh, SATA hard disk and it will be 20 gigabyte why I'm doing this because a premium SSD is costly more cost uh, more costly than the uh, normal hard disk and we don't need a lot of space we don't need one terabyte we need only 20 gigabyte and we need it to be a normal hard disk not a premium SSD hard disk so here you can choose okay 
the space here if you can see that we don't have 20 but you can type it manually in the custom disk if you need to create a custom disk size not in the list so you can put it here and you can change it to not from premium you can change it to uh, this is one of uh, the instructors, the instructors for the Azure has advised us to uh, to change the hard disk type if you are if you need to uh, reduce the cost especially if you are using free Microsoft Azure account okay the one that we are using in our lab okay so now we have uh, created our second hard disk and then after that we will uh, power on the second Azure virtual machine and we will install Active Directory uh, domain services and promote it to be the second domain controller and after that begin the process of creating the department shares the user home folder shares or folders and uh, begin the process that we have discussed theoretically in the beginning of the video anyway so now we will uh, begin next and can and then networking here is some uh, warning say the selected image is too large for the OS cache of the selected machine anyway I don't know why this uh, 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 error or warning but we will tell him next next we have done this before in a uh, lot of times when we were creating uh, the, the Marvel domain the Marvel uh, the domain controllers, the Marvel workstations, we have done this before so now we will uh, complete the process of creating the second Azure virtual machine in our uh, DC Comics domain, it will be the second domain controller now we will uh, complete next 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 and then we will create the Azure virtual machine, the second Azure virtual machine in our DC Comics domain and it says for us that this will cost you 12 cents per hour this virtual machine with this configuration will cost you 12 cents per hour this is excluded I think the second hard disk that I have added okay because this is not included with the virtual machine okay anyway so now we will uh, begin creating our second virtual machine And remember that we need this second virtual machine to be a second domain controller so you need it its private IP address to be a static one okay as for the public uh, we can leave it to be dynamic we have done this with the first domain controller and we will do this with the second domain controller okay so we need to go to the network setting for this Azure virtual machine and specify that the private IP address for this virtual machine will be a static one So we'll go to networking and we go to the network interface and then we will go to the IP configuration and then we'll go to the IP configuration of the private IP address and we tell him to make it static okay and save as for the public IP address we leave it as it is we leave it to be dynamic and we have discussed before, discussed before what is the private IP address and what is a public IP address please to fair my previous videos okay and I said before the whole process for the DC Comics domain was repeated exactly in the Marvel domain so you need to revise the Marvel domain uh, videos to know what we are talking about or to cope that with what we are talking about because I'm talking very briefly in these videos because I have discussed this before okay so we'll go to the DC DC 02 second virtual machine and we will connect to it through the connect button which will download an RDP file we can use this file to connect to the Azure virtual machine you can connect to the virtual machine using a couple or a lot of protocols you can use the 
RDP protocol the SSH for of SSH for the secure protocol connecting protocol and something called uh, Bison okay so here we will connect using our uh, local administrator account and take care that our DNS servers is distributed to this Azure virtual machine through uh, the configuration uh, of the Azure uh, sorry through the DC Comics virtual uh, network address space okay this is done or it is distributed from the Azure uh, from the DC Comics Azure virtual network uh, item I have, I have said this and discussed it and have a graph for uh, how this is done okay so here we will go to our DC DC 02 the first step we need to go to the hard disk that we have uh, added to this virtual machine and uh, partition it and format it and give it a drive letter okay so we can uh, begin using it okay Just a moment. Just a moment. So let's continue our lab. Here we go. Uh, now we have logged into our. Uh, virtual machine and now we will uh, I think we will install the Active Directory uh, domain services no I do not think so I will need first I need to personalize the desktop I need to have uh, this PC and the control panel and couple of icons to appear on the desktop okay this will be done Par uh, partially by the login script but but I need uh, to be organized so I need to have everything in front of my eyes so I need my computer user files control panel and network apply and ok and then we need to uh, here I think I will increase the virtual RAM maybe maybe yes I will increase the virtual RAM for the adjust for best performance also this can be done through the login script here I'll increase the virtual RAM for the server okay by t putting it on the C we take a part of the C partition and uh, take 5 gigabyte to 7 gigabyte of it to act as a virtual a virtual RAM okay this is taking a part of the local hard disk and uh, make it to act as a RAM okay this should be uh, as the best practice to be double the physical RAM or the real RAM okay we have it 3.5 so multiply it by 2 so it should be 7 gigabyte and anyway <laughs> so now we will go to the uh, disk management or computer management and begin uh, initializing or initiate and make our second hard disk online and begin partitioning it and yes here we will make it as MBR and initialize it and then we will uh, partition it to be one partition okay and we will uh, give it the drive letter F and we'll format it as NTFS and we will name it as data okay this is the partition that will contain our uh, department shares uh, and uh, user home folders and maybe uh, the WSOS also as well in, in the future uh, the, the WSOS uh, downloaded updates location okay so anyway now we can add the active directory domain services first of all we need to click do not start 
server manager automatically because this takes from the RAM every time you uh, restart and log into the machine or log into the Windows. Okay, so now I will add the Active Directory domain services and I will add the Winds service or the Winds server role. Okay. Next. Next. Then install. Anyway, now we need to promote it. We have installed Active Directory Domain Service and we need to promote it to a domain controller. This will be uh, to add a domain controller to an existing domain. Our domain will be dcdm.local and we will join this server to the uh, domain by using my domain admin account. Okay. Credentials for deployment operation. Okay. This is my Active Directory domain admin account. Now we can see here from the select, we see our uh, DC Comics domain available. And now tell him next. This will be also acting as a DNS server and it will be a global catalog domain controller. We have discussed this before in previous videos and now we will type the active directory uh, services restore mode password okay and then next then next and then it will replicate because there is a replication process between the domain controllers to assure that they have the same configuration this by the option saying that it replicates to any domain controller in the domain okay Replicates from any domain controller in the domain or the latest one or contains the latest configuration should replicate with it. Okay, anyway, now we are installing or prom sorry, are promoting this to be a domain controller or a second domain controller. And now, after that, we need to uh, uh, do a couple of things. First of all, uh, we need to see if our DNS servers are added to the uh, network connection okay I said before you don't need to do this manually because it will be done for you so we will see that the DNS servers will be added automatically to the network connections uh, property or network connection property for the server okay and we need to add the wins this is the only step so I was mistaken you can add them manually if they were not uh, distributed automatically okay but we will I will show this in a moment don't worry so this is the login script it will be applied we can see that this is the registry keys applied okay we can see the background is applied successfully and the, this PC or the computer appears on the desktop okay this is all are done through using the uh, login script so you can see there is a program called idle log off this is the error that appears for us idle log off is responsible to log off the machine after uh, 3000 seconds of idle time okay so this uh, error saying that it didn't find the program in the specified location so the location of the program is in C idle log off program uh, idle log off folder then idle log off program so we need to have this destination on the C drive so the script will go and run the program from this location okay so it wasn't created and the program was not uh, there already so I have done this anyway so now I have a custom console we have discussed this before we will like we have done in the domain controller or the first domain controller we will add all of our uh, different consoles in one console so we can be able to configure everything from one console we will add active directory console we will add the dns console we will add the wins console 
we will add everything in one console so we can be able to configure everything from one place the group policy management console because if we didn't do this we need to open every console in it in each specific window so we will have seven or six windows with di six different consoles so this will be a headache we can configure everything from only one console with one window so we have all of these we have the dns the group policy the services the wins all of them are in one place and in one console so now we need to make sure that the wins because we have uh, also installed wins on the first domain controller we need to make this wins on this second domain controller to be a partner or to be a replication partner so this wins uh, will replicate with the wins on the first domain controller okay like the dns on the first domain controller will replicate with the dns on the sec the dns on the second domain controller and then we have initiated the replication process by right click and tell him replicate now so we have two wins and to dns if you go to the network first first of all we need to save this console on desktop if you go to the network connection for the server you can see that he has already added the uh, dns servers ip uh, in the network connection properties but he didn't add the windows so we need to add it manually you will see that now it was added in the network connection setting automatically without you doing this we will see that in a moment i didn't change anything in the network connection setting <coughs> so the network connection setting our network connection properties okay so anyway i am now uh, just copying my uh, folder that contains the scripts that i will use to create the department shares and assign the appropriate permissions and the script that will create the user home folders okay all of these are uh, uh, through uh, or or on the first are on the first domain controller now i am uh, installing the 7-zip program on the second domain controller like i have done on the first domain controller and install the classic shell so everything will be identical on both server uh, servers okay I need to tell you a small note all of my scripts I have used it in previous uh, labs so sometimes the location of uh, the scripts and the files in the script folder need to be changed so if you have a script and this script is uh, uh, pointing to a certain location uh, that contains the script files and necessary things to make it run you need to change it if you are changing or working with different labs anyway we are working we are getting to a network connections uh, network connection properties for the server if you open properties we can see that the dns servers are added automatically to the use the following dns server addresses this is done automatically i didn't do it manually by myself i need to add uh, the winds manually because this was not done manually tell him to enable NetBIOS over TCP IP and add our uh, first WINS which was our first domain controller it's acting like DNS and WINS so it will be 10.0.1.4 and then we add our second domain controller which is also acting as a WINS and the DNS 10.0.1.5 we need to do this also on the first domain controller because this was not done okay so now we have uh, completed the process of the configuration of the winds and the dns so now we need to begin the process of creating the uh, department folders and share them and assign the appropriate permissions all of this will be done through using scripts okay so we need to make a restart to the second domain controller so it's now restarting I need to go to the first domain controller and then go to the network setting or network connection 
and add the uh, second Winds server in its network connection setting. Okay, network sharing center, and then we'll go to the network connection setting, and then properties, and then uh, the TCP IP, and then properties, and then we need to add in the winds to add the second winds server, which is our second domain controller, 10.0.1.5. So now we have completed the process, now every server can see the other one and replicate with it and every workstation or uh, workstation can communicate with both Wins server but I think no, you, you need to uh, distribute the DNS servers and Wins servers to the workstations uh, DNS servers will, uh, will be delivered automatically through the Azure uh, uh, through the DC Comics virtual network setting okay but as for the winds this is another thing to discuss anyway <laughs> so I need now to copy the folder that contains the scripts yes this is the folder that contains I need to copy the folder that contains the scripts that I will use to create the department uh, folders and the department shares and the user home folder and the uh, uh, user home folder shares and permissions okay I think why what I am doing I don't know I think I'm copying something I will copy as yes, the department shares this is the folder it will contain okay a couple of things I need to create on the F drive the one that we have created recently we will create a folder and we will name it department shares okay and in it we will create our subfolders every folder will be for a department uh, for the part for example we have created a folder called IT and a folder called HR okay we will see that in a moment so we will delete all of this we will have a script to create a department folders in this department shares folder okay we will see that in a moment so after creating these folders we, we will share them and have permissions on them done by script okay this is uh, discussed or it is uh, clarified in the graph in the pre in the beginning of the video okay so now we now create another user called another folder called users this is the folder that will contain the ho user home folder directories or home user or, or user home folder folders okay for our active directory okay so now we need to share the users folder okay and give domain users uh, read uh, full control on it okay so this we have a s dollar sign after it so this share will be hidden okay it will not be seen by anyone okay we need only the users to access it but not to see it okay because it will be mapped anyway so now we will have uh, just a moment I need to have the folder of the scripts here okay this is the script that I will use to create the user home folders we need to to see that the name of the folder it will be users okay okay here it is yes this is users so we will na or share it as users and s dollar sign and then we remove everyone this is the best practice and then we will add domain users and give it full control this is a built-in active directory uh, group that contains all of our active directory domain users and we i have also a custom group called dc underscore all users this also contains all of my dc comics active directory users okay so i will add it also and give it 
uh, full control and I will add the group of the IT okay to have also full control so this is the three groups that we will add uh, after sharing the uh, folder and give these groups share or, or SMB share permissions on it the DC IT the DC all users the domain users all will have full control this is through the SMB share permissions and then we will have also the same three uh, active directory groups to have the same permissions but on the NTFS side or the NTFS permissions so we have domain users we have it full control and we will add DC all users this is a group as I said before contain all of my DC comics users in it so the same or as the same function as it or it does the same function as the domain users okay DCIT we have full control so now we have shared our uh, folder that contains or that will contain our user uh, home folders or oh, this is a private folder that every user can put his personal or uh, personal data on it okay so here I need to copy the scripts that I will use to create the user home folders and the department shares uh, or the department folders and sharing them and giving them permissions okay so I need to first of all we have two lines as this because I was using this uh, scripts before in a previous video so I, I, I was putting the script in a folder called the Marvel domain and the script will go and read an Excel sheet that contains another data also in another different folder so because we don't have the uh, partition in our uh, server or our second domain controller we will make another or we will change it to F and we will name the folder or give it the correct folder that contains the scripts and the uh, text files uh, associated with this script or the or the scripts and the text files that the script will need to uh, implement or to go processing it as I said before every script will read from a text file or a CSV file to uh, get the data he needs for example if a script will create folders it will go to an excel sheet that will see the folder names and the location of the folders okay so this is uh, what we will do we will have create a folder we will put the scripts and the uh, text or excel sheets associated with these scripts okay so here we have the folder name department shares this is the, the script that will create folders in our uh, main folder department shares so we need to name it correctly we don't have to don't have spaces between the names so here our script will create four folders in the main folder which is called department shares this will be done through using a script okay So here I'll go and copy. This is the folder that contain my scripts. I will put it in the F drive. Or no, I think I will paste the shortcut. And then I will copy the scripts. So well, this is the four folders that will be created. So I will run the script. I think no, I think I need, I need to change the location first. So here we will tell him this it's not D, it's in the F partition. Okay, and as for the script, it should be the script. It goes and read from a text file. This text file it's not in D, it should be also in the F this text file contains the name of the folders that this script should create okay so the script will go and read a text file that will contains the folders names and the location okay so now we need to go and create in the F uh, partition a folder named Marvel domain and put all of our scripts in it so the uh, script will uh, be running or will be pointing to the correct location Okay, and now taking all of the scripts, okay. 
even I will not name it Marvel domain I will name it scripts and then I will go and change every script I use to reflect or to point to the correct location of the scripts and the associated files uh, Excel sheets and something okay so we now will create a folder and we name it scripts I said before all of this is done in the Marvel domain so if you need to remember or to refresh your mind please refer to my uh, previous videos or the earlier videos of uh, creating the Marvel domain because I, have, I am doing the exact process again okay so now I will begin now implementing here it's not the F it will be not F Marvel it will be F scripts okay so now we can implement the script now we can see it had created four folders uh, a folder for the IT, a folder for the HR, a folder for uh, our human resources and a folder for the department heads HOD we need after that or we will use a script to uh, uh, put uh, specific permissions first to share these folders and to put specific permissions on these folders okay and give every security or every active directory group certain permissions uh, to access these share folders as i said before for example the hod we need the group or the active directory group for the hod to access this folder after it is shared so this script will share the folders will put specific permissions on it and these specific permissions is linked to specific active directory groups okay so here just because this was for the marvel domain so i am changing it from marvel domain to reflect the dc comics domain okay so the domain is dc dcm and the group it's not marvel hod it's dc hod okay so i need just to uh, reflect or reflect the correct domain and reflect uh, and and uh, to reflect the correct active directory security groups okay so this script will share the folders, add permissions, uh, and add uh, add permissions, uh, and assign them to certain Active Directory security groups, and remove every one group from uh, the share uh, permissions. Okay, and uh, we will see that when the permission, or we see that when the script is implemented, we will go and see the result. Okay, so now we are changing the domain okay because this was uh, working with the marvel domain so we are reflecting the uh, correct setting the correct domain and the correct uh, active di active directory security groups so working with scripts will ease your life okay you need just to be uh, specific and to prepare it you need to prepare a lot before uh, working with the creating or or before automating the process of creating of the active directory and all of its content like the objects and computer objects user objects and groups and so on so so now we are just as i said before i'm just uh, just reflecting the right okay so now it's already so now we can save and then we can implement the script and see if it will be implemented correctly and the right uh, active directory group will have the right permissions as we have discussed in the graph So now we'll save the script and then implement it. We yeah, can see that all of them are uh, implemented successfully. We will go to the folders and see if they are shared and if they are given the right permissions. So we open the department shares, the global share. We will right click properties and see the sharing permissions. Okay, the SMB share permissions. Okay, and permissions we can see that the group of DCIT, the IT have full control and the global share group have uh, changed this is correct and if they go to the HOD 
we can see also that in the sharing this is the SMB uh, script we can see that we have the group of IT have full control and the DCHOD uh, group have change permission so this is correct we can go now and implement the S uh, the NTFS permission okay so you now we have finished with the uh, SMB share permissions we need to implement the NTFS permissions why we have two uh, NTF uh, two type of permissions just like having a safe with two keys okay so this is the main function okay here I also I'm changing the location because uh, it's we don't have a D partition it's in the F partition and we don't have Marvel it's in the scripts okay this is reflecting the correct uh, the correct location okay so this is our all uh, scripts I got from the internet so it's very easy it's not I didn't do this scripts they, they are all available for download and editing so you can play with them as as long as you like or are as all as uh, whenever you wish okay so now I think we can pass this real quickly okay Just pass it okay again again so now we will implement the NTFS permissions okay implement okay now if you go we will check and see if the NTFS permissions are there we need to go and see and if they are typical to the SMB share permissions now we can go to the global share for example or the HOD okay and then we we'll right click properties we can see in the security that HOD or the IT has full control and the HOD are having modify permission okay this is exactly what we have been discussing in the uh, in the graph okay so now we have implemented the SMB share permissions the NTFS share permissions we need to implement uh, the, the the script for creating the user home folders also we need to change a couple of settings we need to change the location of the script okay and the domain it's not Marvel domain and the the folder for the users it's the share folder for the users or the look share folder this is not DC Marvel 02 now we will change it to F okay, don't, I don't, I don't need to show you all this process anyway so now we need to do what we need here we have changed it to F scripts the location of the scripts and the domain it's DCDM and the location of the users folder that con that will contain our uh, all of our users home folders is DC DC 02 the share okay that we have been done in a couple of minutes ago and then we will see after that it will be mapped as drive L we will see that so let's see how the script will be implemented and then I'll tell him to implement you can see that now home directory created for all of our users okay so if you right click any uh, user in the active directory and see its properties we can see in the profile tab okay you will see that a home user or a home folder will be created here we can see this is our all of our uh, home folders if you right click any active directory user in the active directory uh, console you will see that in the profile tab uh, you will see a home folder is created it will be giving an L because it will be mapped as a network drive and it will be mapped as L and it will be named according to the user uh, username active directory username so here we can see this this is L and aqua aquaman we will see that when we log in okay we will show you a practical example so you can see here yes it's Batman and all of this here I will show you uh, something because I, I, I have created my user recently 
and it was not in the script so I need to here is the way that you can create a local or to create a, a home folder manually just to give him the uh, letter that you need this home folder to be mapped to or the network drive a map a letter okay and then I will make it DC DC02 and the, the folder that contains the will contain the home the home the user home folder directory and then the name of the home folder okay so now we need another thing we need to control uh, the department shares uh, how much data can be put in it we need to make a quota for the department shares and we need to make a quota for the user home folders okay so it will not be given uh, or it will not be unlimited okay now here this is the group called DC default users this is the group that I will uh, use it or I, I need the users in it to have uh, uh, USB and DVD uh, uh, disabled for them So now we can see or we can go to the mapping policy now we need to uh, configure the mapping policy to reflect uh, or to map the department shares okay uh, using the correct uh, share locations okay so now this is the map drives okay so here we can see that the one in the graph that this is the the share of the department but this is not correct this will be on DC02 and the share will be named HR so we need the HR share to be mapped as M but the share is not on DC Marvel 02 server this is the domain controller of Marvel we need to change it to the domain controller of uh, DC comics which will be DC 02 and the share folder will be named as HR we have done this before so we need to change all of them to reflect the or to reflect the correct share location okay okay so it's not DC Marvel and we need okay so I'm telling him that it's DC DC 02 and it will be shown and it will be given a letter of M and this will be applied applied once this rule will be applied once and it will be applied on the H HR group okay so this map drive will be only mapped to uh, the group or the members of the group of the DC HR okay we have discussed this before so now we will have it's DC DC02 and this will be applied or, or this map drive or map drive will will appear for the uh, IT group okay or DC IT group common apply once and do not reapply and then item uh, categorize we needed to apply to a certain group which is dc underscore it and we need it to be a user in this group so any user in this group the map drive will appear for him okay and we have department shares to be uh, uh, mapped as m drive the department heads share will be mapped as n and as for the global share that will be available for all departments this will be mapped as O the global share this is a share that will appear for all of the four departments IT, HOD and HR so this is a shared uh, folder for all of the three departments to share it and use it together okay so we can name it okay we name this share as global share and we name it as share reconnect this says that if the connection or the 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 share or, or the the connection with the share is down you need to reconnect automatically every time okay so 
so we we'll need DC Global Share. This is a group that contain all of my DC Comics users. Okay, we will see all of this. We will make a, a, a test and log off and log in again to the server and see if our uh, department shares will appear. Need to tell you something. I am a member of the IT group, and so the IT share should appear for me, and the global share should appear for me and my home user folder should appear for me the home user folder should appear as l the department share should appear as m and named it and the global share should appear for me as o and it is named global share okay so we'll see that in a moment the last thing we will do we need after testing our uh, mapping group policy okay we need to make a quota for the department shares and uh, uh, user home folders okay and not only to make a quota and to restrict that both the department shares and the user home folders not to have any video or audio on it so this will be done through uh, the file server uh, setting I will show you all how this can be done so through the file server you can uh, specify a quota for the department shares and the uh, user home folders and uh, you can make a blocking rule to block certain files to be uh, added okay here we can see that here is my home folder user home folder named according to my active directory username and this is my IT department share it's M and the HOD I am a member of the uh, department heads so I, it was mapped for me and the global share okay so I am uh, all of these appeared correctly uh, so we need to see how we, we can make quota for them okay so we need to make quota and to block I need on all of these the user home folder and the department shares I need the users not to put any audio or video on all of these department shares and uh, home user folder that are mapped now okay so we'll see how this is done we need to add the file server role and then configure a quota and configure a file screening or a file called file screening option or file blocking option okay this should be done through the server manager we will add the file server role and begin adding uh, or making quota I know this is a little bit uh, we have a lot of things with it, but we have discussed in this video but uh, I assure you that, uh, that after that <coughs> we don't have a lot of things to talk about we have a couple of videos and this whole lab will be ending so <coughs> anyway we'll go and uh, open the server manager and add the file and resource or file and server resource manager okay file add server role So now we will add the file and storage services then we will add the file okay file and SCSI and then we will add file server resource manager and from this file server resource manager we can configure the quota and the file screening option okay quota to uh, limit how much space is used uh, or how much data will be put in our department shares and user home folders and to block certain type of files to be added to these folders or shares okay
think we can pause it real quickly. Okay, we can pause it. Okay. So now we have added the file and uh, file server resource manager, and then we will add it to our uh, custom console. File and add snap and remove snap in. Then add the file server resource manager and then add. Then OK. And then we will configure the quota. We will add uh, a quota to the department shares. Here we have two options to create quota. Fair to create quota on post. I mean that, for example, the department shares folder. Okay, we have 10 giga on this folder, so that means that any subfolder under the department shares will share this 10 gigabyte, for example, with it. For example, the department shares contains uh, five subfolders. All of them will share the 10 gigabyte that we have used as a quota. This is the first option. As for the second option, it's called auto template, uh, auto apply template and create quotas in existing uh, subfolder. That means that you have a department shares and then you have, uh, for example, a uh, 10 subfolders and you have a 10 gigabyte of uh, quota 10 gigabyte will be given to every subfolder so it's not shared the first one it will share the 10 gigabyte with any number of subfolders under it but as for the second option it will have a separate quota for every subfolder okay i have also discussed this before to every subfolder already there and created so first of all for the users we will have auto template so every subfolder under the users that, that will contain our user home folders will be have or will have a 100 megabyte of uh, quota on his user home folder as for the department shares they will have total of 10 gigabyte for all of the department shares so for example if the IT used the 10 gigabyte no one from the other departments will be able to put anything okay so you need to share it between them this is the uh, quota and then the file screen we need to tell him to or to block audio and video on the block audio and video on the department shares and on the user home folders okay okay So now we have finished, I think we have finished the video, now we can save the console. Now we can see that this is the quota. Okay, this is the uh, home folder, it's 100 megabyte and the other department shares. We can see that they have the same quota, but if I put here something 1 gigabyte, it will decrease from 9 to 8 for all of them, okay. I think this video is finished somehow okay okay so this concludes for our video we will discuss in the upcoming video uh, how we can make an azor template okay but in different way that we have done it in the marvel domain so it's a lot of information i know but hope this video was informative for for you all uh, and and i would like to thank you all for viewing Okay, uh, this oh, thank you so much. Okay, I'm just uh, s stopping down the virtual machines. Okay, thank you so much.